Um, so we got uh, David, the first caller from, is it Grand Blanc, Michigan? Grand Blanc. Grand Blanc. Hi, Matt. Hey, how you doing? Hey. I'm a proponent of William Lane Craig's moral argument, and I have a couple of questions about some of the objections you've had with that argument in the past. Okay. So, um, as I understand it, you are a moral realist, correct? What's that? Um, from what I understand, you are a moral moral realist, right? You it, it accept would, premise two of the argument. It de well, it depends on what. So you better give the argument so that it's clear that, and we're not just talking to each other in code while nobody else gets to hear anything. Okay. Well, premise one is. If God does not exist, then objective moral values and duties do not exist. Yeah, I premise reject the least, first premise. Objective moral values and duties do exist, and then the conclusion is that God exists. Yeah, I reject the first premise. Okay, and from what I understand, and correct me if I'm misrepresenting you, but in the past you've said that moral values are right and wrong depending on how they affect the well-being of people. So, yeah, when I'm talking about morality, I tend to be talking about well-being. If that's not what somebody else is talking about, then we'd need a different word. Um, okay. but, but that, to me, seems to be the evaluation that we're making. And that because we're physical beings in a physical universe, um, there are truths to be discovered about the consequences of our actions. But they are entirely situational. Okay. Well, then my question would be, what is truly wrong with negatively affecting the well-being of people it, on an atheistic worldview. If we are just a blind product of time plus matter plus chance, what inherent moral worth do we have? We have moral worth to ourselves. That's what matters. Is that not completely subjective, though? Yeah. So how is it objectively wrong so to or somebody. The assessment is contingent upon us agreeing that we're going to care about well-being. Okay, well, I agree that well-being is a good thing, and I agree okay. that people have inherent value. Then, but then I, that's the only thing we need to agree on to then be able to make non-subjective assessments of actions. Okay, but on your worldview, if there is no God and we are just overgrown germs, then what is our inherent moral worth? I have a basis. There's no such thing as inherent moral worth. So it isn't right or wrong to kill somebody. Moral evaluations are what we make. There's no intrinsic right or wrong. So morality is subjective. The foundation of morality, as I mentioned already and conceded a minute ago, is subjective, that we're going to care about well-being. Because if we don't, we're going to cease to exist. We care about our existence and we care about our well-being. Those people who don't care about it tend to go away. And so what I said a minute ago was that the only thing we need to agree on is that we do in fact care about our well-being. And once we agree to that, which is subjective, and you, you could potentially argue arbitrary, I don't think it's quite the case, um, because we're talking about whether or not we exist or not, or the quality of our existence. But assuming we agree on well-being, we can then make non-subjective assessments of the consequences of our actions. If, we, if you and I care about well-being, then lopping off my head is in violation with my well-being, right? Yes. Okay, but that's all we need, and it's not a matter of opinion as to whether or not that is in violation of my well-being. It's a fact. Okay, but you're just redefining right and wrong in terms of... I'm not redefining course. anything. I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is this is what most everyone has always meant when they talk about right and wrong. That what they're actually pointing to is a foundation of well-being. That if morality is to mean anything, it references well-being. Now, if you disagree with that, that morality is something else, okay, then you're talking about something different from what I'm talking about. Well, as I said, I agree with you that Morality has to do with well-being and that cool. People, then no gods required If morality is about well-being then the first premise of the argument is already wrong No, I, I, I wasn't conceding that I was saying that I agree that people matter and that what uh, helps our well-being is generally good but on an atheistic worldview, how can you make that assertion without that just being your opinion? If it is just my opinion, and it happens to be shared by pretty much everybody who's ever lived anywhere. 
But I thought you said morality was objective. I said, wow, I don't know how, you, uh, how many times can I agree with you that the foundation, wow. I've said repeatedly in this episode, the foundation of well-being is subjective. But once we agree on that, the evaluations of actions with respect to that is objective. Okay, well, maybe it would help if I tell you what I mean by objective. Objective means right and wrong regardless of human opinion. So, okay, that's not what objective means. Yeah, objective has nothing to do with right and wrong. Well, when I say objective moral values... Okay, values. fine. I don't give a rat's ass what you... If you're going to try to, to claim that objective morals only exist if, if you don't begin with some sort of subjective foundation, then you're talking about something else that I'm not talking about. You're now hung up on this word moral and you're poisoning the well by saying it must necessarily mean what I think it means. Well, I don't agree. Well, I'm not trying to redefine anything. I'm just telling you what I mean in the argument. Objective means right and wrong regardless of human opinion. So Yeah, I and, it, and I agree with that, and that's what I said, that cutting off my head, if, if we say that, that well-being is the foundation of right and wrong, cutting off my head is in violation of well-being irregard, irregardless, irrespective of anybody's opinion. And that's a fact, right? Okay, but again, that just brings us to the original... Point. What right. is so bad about the original point is is morality based on well being or is it based on a god? Okay, well, we both agree that certain things are truly right and wrong. That things like And, and why do we agree on that? What's that? And why do we agree that certain things are right or wrong? Because we inherently know, we intuitively know that some things Really no, are right no, I these. don't think I don't think we intuitively know right from wrong. We we may intuitively know, but that's not the reason because yeah. your intuitions can be wrong. We agree because we're talking about well being. We've already agreed on that. Well, right and wrong is objective, if you ask me, because it's grounded in God's nature. Okay, I don't care. Yeah, I think that's see a... the problem is is that that doesn't make anything objective. Uh, the, all the objections to secular morality that religions think they solve, they don't solve. Okay, well, maybe this would help. What? Okay, Hitler thinks that it's all right to kill six million Jews, okay. correct? Well, so I, I suppose he thinks opinion, it does. What makes his opinion any worse than your opinion? I'm sure that you think otherwise, but is that not just your opinion? It, it is, in fact, my opinion, but if we're going to agree that moralities are rooted in well-being, then Hitler's position is objectively in conflict with well-being, as is God's order to kill the Midianites. Okay, well, see, you're just redefining right and wrong to be that which helps uh, human well-being. No, 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 no. I'm not redefining it to be well-being. I'm saying I'm talking about well-being, and for me, that is a good foundation for morality. If you think that morality is something other than well-being, then I'm not talking about that, and I don't care. Well, for Hitler... Uh, killing the Jews was a good foundation for right and wrong. So what makes his values less valid than yours? Because they're in conflict with well-being. But that's just your opinion. Isn't yeah. It? And shared by six and, million Jews, I might add. Yeah. Well, well <laughs> what, what in your view makes it wrong? Because it's contrary to God's necessarily good. That's nature. just your opinion. No, it's not. Because if Yes, it is. God, it's not my opinion. I don't yeah. agree with you that it's in conflict with God's view. Therefore, well, can, we have a disagreement. Can, How can you, you can show me what God's view is? You, you, can't have, you don't have no way to demonstrate it, so it's just your opinion. Well, okay, if there is a God and his, his, his nature is the foundation for objective moral values and duties by which we... How do you know that's the case? What's that? How do you know that's the case? I'm not saying that I, I, I don't have to show the guy like this in order to... Okay, then I don't have to show this. anything, because what I'm saying here is you're, you're not solving the problem. By saying that this is about my opinion, what you're doing to resolve it or attempt to resolve it is by saying, ah, that's your, just your opinion. My opinion is that it's all rooted in God, and I don't have to show that God is real or God exists. That's just the way it is. Well, you can let me finish. On a theistic worldview... God's nature is the paradigm of right and wrong. It's the standard by which we can determine if something is good or evil. Yeah, and, and I don't buy that. What's that? I don't buy that. Okay, then you disagree. Well, would you agree that if there was no God, then it would all be subjective? I, I don't see how it's not subjective whether there's no. a God or not. 
Now, I'm talking about moral values. Would they be subjected and subjective if there was no God? I'm not. So in, at the point at which you're saying it's subjective, I am not convinced that it's not subjective, whether a God exists or not. A God does not solve the problem, because at most all you've done is say, this is this God's opinion. Okay, well, that's not the truth. If God exists, know? then his moral commands flow from his necessarily good nature. How do you, that's How do you know he's good? His nature is how necessarily you, how did, good. How did you tell that? He's the greatest... He's the greatest conceivable being. How, how do you know that Based he exists? What? Okay, I can conceive of beings that are great, but that doesn't mean they exist. Well, if God exists, then his moral commands are necessarily good. He is and the foundation. And if the universe creating one. pixies exist, then they could have created the universe. That doesn't solve the problem. Well, okay, let's get back on track to the argument, because you say that moral values are... Obje are uh, objective. I objected to the mind. very first premise, which you've not okay, gone back so to. The first premise, again, is that if God does not exist, then objective moral values and duties do not exist. Right. How do you ground objective right and wrong if there is no God? I don't. So we, I've said I reject the first premise. Okay, then. But you, you said that moral values are objective. You've I've said, said that, that you can make moral assessments that are objective provided you agree on a foundation with which to evaluate them to. Okay, well, like I said, if something is objectively right or wrong, that means it's right or wrong regardless of human opinion. Yes, so, and cutting off my head is right or wrong regardless of your opinion of it. As long, But it's right or wrong with respect to what? And I'm, I, I'm saying that it's right or wrong with respect to well-being. And you're saying that it's right or wrong with the respect to God's nature. And I don't okay. give a rat's ass what God's nature is because you haven't demonstrated there is a God. And if God's nature was to turn around and say, kill your child or kill the Midianites or anything else, it doesn't make it morally correct. Either okay. something is right or wrong because God says so, or God says so because it's already right or wrong. If the first is true, then whatever God says becomes moral, and there's no moral standing beyond capriciousness, beyond God's opinion, which still makes it subjective. And if God only says something is moral because it's his character to say that things are moral, then his character can be discovered irrespective of whether he exists or says so. I want to get back to the original thing that you said. You said that, um, you said that it's wrong to lop off your head regardless of human opinion. Yeah, because that's not the it, first thing I said, by the way, but go ahead. Yeah. Well, you said that, and then you went on to talk about how God is deficient for objective moral values, which was off topic of the first premise anyways. No, it wasn't. Okay. If the first premise is that without God you can't have objective moral values, what if it turns out you can't have objective moral values even if there is a God? Then the argument utterly fails. I could concede there is a God and you still have not demonstrated objective moral values under the definition you're trying to use. That's why I reject the first premise. Okay. Well, I still want to hit on that one point though because I don't think you've sufficiently uh, given a foundation for objective moral values. It's not my no goal time. or requi requirement to give a foundation for objective moral values. Your argument begins with, if there is no God, there is no objective moral values. You have not demonstrated that there actually are objective moral values under your definition. Okay, well, I, I, I just need to show that premise one is true. So sure. if there's, on an atheistic worldview, what makes anything right or wrong? It's all just opinion you're, based. Hey, okay, you're not understanding the first premise. If there is no God, in other words, if atheism is true, then nothing is objectively right or wrong. That's the first premise. So, there's two things that need to happen here. You have to demonstrate that on your worldview, objective moral values can exist, and on all competing worldviews, they cannot exist. Now, my view is that depending, if we agree on a definition of well-being, if that's going to be the foundation of morality, then objective assessments can be made about actions. But that objective values, um, as if they are intrinsic objective truths, don't exist. So if a god exists, you have to be able to demonstrate that objective moral truths do exist. And my position is that I don't see that they exist under your definition, whether there's a god or not. Well, on my definition, if there is a God, then we have a standard of right and wrong. How? So you can think about it like... How? 
I mean, that's I'm nothing just, more than a that's nothing well, more than a bald. I assertion. wish you would let me finish because I was going to get to that. Okay. So imagine we're all floating around in outer space. I have my own up and down. It's it's relative to my position in space. If you're floating around somewhere else, you might have your own definition of up and down. Who's to say what's up or down in outer space? You can't because you don't have a spatial reference point. Yeah, it Likewise, doesn't matter. Likewise, if there is no God, you don't have a moral reference point. You can't say whether something yes, is right or wrong. Yes, we do. We still, we still have a moral reference point. Yeah. It's well-being, which you agreed to. Okay, well, I, I actually didn't agree to that. I said that most so You don't think that that's do a reference point? So you don't think that's a good reference point for morality? No, because human okay. well-being is not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing if there is no God. If it's just... So, wait, so, wait a minute. So why is, my, why is my well-being contingent on the existence of a God? Because if we're created in his image with inherent worth, then you and have I don't, intrinsic well-being. And I don't, I don't well believe that. So you've just got this cavalcade of assumptions. You're just going to assume that God exists, that we're created in his image, that he's necessarily good, that this serves as a moral foundation. Those are all just bald assertions. Please demonstrate that any of it is true. Well, I don't have to de de then demonstrate Then you don't have to stay true. on That's the show. The Thanks. We're going to move on. Could you please? Yeah. No. Nope. Uh, we'll go ahead and get Joan in and La Miranda queued up there. Um, yeah, you can say, say, here's the problem, is that theistic objections to secular morality uh, aren't solved by theism. Oh, well, without God, you have no foundation. Okay, well, with God, we have no foundation. Because all you've done is say, this is what God says, or this is consistent with God's character. Well, I don't care whether or not my action is consistent with what God wants me to do or what God says to do or God's character, I care about whether or not it is in the best interest of human beings, whether or not it is within our well-being. There's no guarantee that a God has our best interests at heart at all. And so if a God can say, run around and slaughter these people or kill your child or anything else, how did you determine that God is the good one and Satan is the evil one? If they're both capable of deceiving you, then perhaps what they're saying, I am the law and I am the ultimate arbiter of morality, is wrong. Oh, but God can't be wrong. Why not? Because we assume God can't be wrong. Well, congratulations. Your argument is entirely circular. What you have said is God equals morality which means anything that God commands or anything you think God commands suddenly becomes moral with no evaluation of its real consequences, with no tie to the well-being of the participants involved. Theistic morality is an epic failure, and it is used to get people to commit atrocities in the name of their God with no consideration of humanism, humanity, or what should be the right thing. Now, if you don't agree with me that well-being is a good foundation for morality, that's your prerogative, and the best I can do is try to convince you through debate and discussion. But religion has the same problem. This is what my God says. This is what my God says. Well, how do you resolve that conflict? You can't, beyond coercion, conversion, or conquest. Sitting around arguing about whose God is right doesn't get you anywhere. But we can sit around and discuss what is or isn't in our best interest. And that's how we make progress. And that's why humanism is infinitely more valuable than any religious dogma pertaining to morality. Which, incidentally, if uh, that's your claim that basically if you think God said to do something, that it's morally correct for you to do it, um, by that logic, we couldn't convict Andrea Yates of anything because yep. she actually believed... Her religion told her she was doing the best thing she could do for her children by killing them before they had a chance to sin and possibly go to hell. So by killing them, she was sacrificing herself but making sure her children got to heaven. That was a... Uh... I have an alarm going yeah. off. I don't know what it's for. <laughs> Why would there be an alarm at 5 o'clock on a Sunday? Yeah. So anyway, by, by killing them, she was basically making sure they went to heaven. So that was that was her thing. She thought she was doing a good thing. Of course, she we recognized that she was very seriously mentally ill, um, but you know she still got prosecuted. Uh, no one bought the the God told me to defense. See, I always silence my cell phone before I come in, but alarms tend to ignore the silence. Mm. 